What do you mean by functional elements of a generalized measurement system? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question again. What do you actually mean by functional elements of a generalized measurement system? Well, let's find out. So let us imagine that I am applying 5 Newton of force on top of this particular board. I am applying 5 Newton of force like this. But how do we know that I am applying exactly 5 Newton of force on top of this particular board? For that, we need some kind of a measurement device that tells us, yes, Rishi is applying 5 Newton of force on top of this particular board. So therefore, such kind of a device that tells us a measurement of whatever quantity that we need is referred to as a particular measurement system. That is, if I am applying 5 Newton of force like this, then this particular measurement system will tell us that the amount of force that is applied is 5 Newton. If I am measuring force here. Another example is the speedometers that are seen inside your cars. It is a measurement system. It tells you guys, yes, you are going at 60 kilometers an hour. You are going at 100 kilometers an hour. If you go above 120 kilometers an hour, it starts beeping and tells you guys, no, you are not supposed to speed. Please slow down. So these are all measurement systems that actually tells you guys a measurement of a particular quantity. So therefore, in order to measure these quantities, certain functional elements are required. What are these functional elements? Well, let's actually construct a block diagram and let us actually see what all functional elements are actually required. So first, we will have the quantity that has to be measured. This quantity can be force or acceleration or displacement or velocity or whatever. So this is the quantity to be measured. So now there must be some kind of a sensor to actually sense this particular quantity. That is for example, if I want to measure the force, we can use a spring. With the compression of the spring, we can sense the amount of force that is applied. So therefore, some kind of a sensing element is required. So therefore, this quantity that has to be measured is passed to a particular sensing element. And now, next what we have to do is that we have to do variable conversion. That is, if we take the example of force and if we say that the force is sensed by the compression of a particular spring, then we can see that the spring is compressed through a particular distance. But that compressed distance is not required or it is not sufficient for us to actually say that 5 Newton of force was applied. So therefore, this particular distance through which the spring is compressed must be converted to a usable variable. And therefore, we have to pass this and therefore variable conversion must happen. And therefore, here we'll have a variable conversion element. And now next, whatever variable that is converted here, it must be processed. And therefore, there is a variable processing element over here. So therefore, after the variable processing that has happened here, this particular element will deduce the fact of whatever quantity was applied. The measured value of this quantity is achieved here. Now, our next aim is to show the user or is to show us or for us to see the fact that whatever this particular quantity is, we have to see the measured quantity. So for that, what we do is that this is now passed to a transmission element. And so now with this data transmission element, we can connect a particular display device like a monitor or in the case of a car, a speedometer, whatever output device that we need that can be connected to this particular data transmission element and we can actually see this particular measured quantity. Therefore, this is connected to a data presentation element as simple as that guys it is very simple it is something that you can actually deduce with common sense first the quantity to be measured therefore it has to be sensed and therefore it is passed through a sensing element then after it gets sensed then this particular variable has to be converted to some kind of a usable variable and therefore variable conversion happens here and after variable conversion happens this particular converted variable must be processed and therefore it goes through a variable processing element after this, we have to transmit this particular information that we have processed over here and therefore it goes to a data transmission element and after that, in order to display this particular measured quantity, we pass it to a data presentation element. As simple as that guys, as simple as that, there's nothing more to it. So guys, these thus are the basic function elements of a generalized measurement system. 
As simple as that, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as function elements of a generalized measurement system. And if you like this video, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting the subscribe button. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and till next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.